Hi, my name is Debbie Hopkins and I'm with the Queen Anne's County Department of Emergency Services. I'm super excited today to have my friends here from the Health Department. I'd like to introduce everybody and tell you what we're doing today. Um, Edwin, we're going to start with you. You are our peer recovery specialist with I the am. Health Department. I am. Okay. And this is Catherine Doolin. She's a peer recovery specialist. And Kirby Kimball, she's also a peer recovery specialist. Recognize the signs of an opioid overdose. Loud snoring, lips or fingertips turning blue, pale grayish skin, unresponsiveness, a very limp body, shallow, slow, or stop breathing, slow or stopped heartbeat. Step one, get their attention. Firmly rub your knuckles up and down the middle of the person's chest. Step two, call 911. Tell them your location and the person's symptoms. Step three, Give naloxone. Peel back the package to remove the device. Place tip of nozzle in either nostril until your fingers touch the bottom of the person's nose. Press the plunger firmly to release dose into the nose. Give second dose if first dose does not work within one to three minutes. Step four, support their breathing. Lay the person on their back, tilt the chin back, Remove anything blocking their airway, pinch the person's nose closed, and cover their mouth with your mouth. Blow two regular breaths, then give one breath every five seconds. Do chest compressions if trained in CPR. Step five, care for the person. Stay with the person until medical help arrives. Place the person in recovery position, face and head turned to the side, top hand placed under head, and top knee bent to support the body. So now that we've learned how to give Narcan, we also want to make sure that we're giving the Narcan every one to three minutes until help arrives. It is important to note that if someone does stop breathing and we're not able to resuscitate them, that we know how to give CPR. CPR is super simple and anyone can do it. And remember that doing something is better than nothing. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to do a very simplistic CPR until help arrives. We are going to, as my friends from the peer support group suggested, we are definitely going to make sure that the person is unresponsive. We're only taking five seconds to evaluate that. Tap, tap, tap. They didn't respond. We're looking at them. We have no notable breathing, respiratory effort, or it is not of good quality, poor color, and all of the other signs and symptoms that my friends already discussed. At that point, we are going to go ahead and give CPR. We just want to make sure that we note the breastbone and we want to go to the middle or lower half of the breastbone. That's where we want to put our hands. We're looking for the palm of your hand. We want that base right here. This is a very strong point. We're going to put our hands over top of each other just like this. We're going to lock our elbows and we're going to get close to the patient. We're going to drop a knee next to their shoulder. We're going to put our feet up so that we have support so that we don't move as we're giving CPR. And we're going to put our hands down and we're going to push hard, deep and fast. That's the takeaway message today. So watch me as I do it. It is important that you push as hard as you can, as deep as you can, and as fast as you can. And what this is doing is circulating oxygen until my friends from the emergency medical services can arrive. Continue to consider Narcan during this time. One to three minutes you can give Narcan. We're gonna do this until help arrives until someone else takes over, or until you're just simply too exhausted to continue. What we're really hoping for is that you will continue this effort until the person is resuscitated. And it's as simple as that. Thanks for learning to save a life.